Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Father in heaven, we bless your name for today. Be thy exalted Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word this morning, we ask that the heavens will truly be opened upon us. You will grant us understanding of that purpose of today's message in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answers to this prayer. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we will be examining the title, The Hidden Wisdom revealed the hidden wisdom revealed and our text for today is taken from the epistle the first epistle of paul apostle to the corinthian church chapter 2 beginning from verse 6 it reads how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, Yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually Descend, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. May the Lord continue to bless the reading of his words in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today we are looking at the title, The Hidden Wisdom Revealed. And the reading today dwells on the wisdom of God, which Apostle Paul described as a mystery. And from the passage that we have read today, and particularly if we start a little bit from uh, you know, the verses, verse 1, we see there the revelation of deeper truths which is meant for matured minds, for seasoned men of God. Here, Apostle Paul was speaking of two types of wisdom. One is that which could be born out of eloquence, out of carnality out of human wisdom and he described it as that which is 
born out of the excellency of speech. And he went on to talk about the fact that our faith should not stand only on the issues of the wisdom of men. And in verse 7, he spoke of the wisdom of God, which he describes as a mystery. And when he used that word mystery, he was describing that which had not been previously made known. That which had hitherto remained uh, hidden. And so he says it is a mystery. The level of wisdom that is needed to unravel this demands spiritual input, demands spiritual awakening, particularly when it concerns issues in the Word of God, issues in our lives as children of God. The persecutors of Christ, had they known the plan and the purpose of God, had the plans of God been revealed to them, probably they would not have hurriedly terminated the life of Christ. And in, being, in burning out of their anger, all they had succeeded in doing was to fulfill the plan of God because it remained a mystery to them. And Paul went on to admonish that for so long as we are in the flesh, chances are that we will miss out from the plan of God. And that was what these early persecutors of Christ suffered, not knowing that they were actually fulfilling the plan of redemption. For us to dwell in the realm of the mysterious, for us to dwell in the realm of this awakening, we need the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit to indwell us. We need the Spirit to control us. We need the Spirit to instruct us, to lead us. Because the Spirit searches even the deep things of God. And if you look at verse 10 of that passage, it says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. We need the leading of the Spirit of God for us to know God's plans for our lives and to operate therein so that our lives do not run counter to the will of God, whether we are conscious of it or we are running our lives unconscious of the fact that we are running against the plans of God. And that is why he went on to say that in verses 9 and 10, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. But my question to you at this point is this, beloved do you have the indwelling Spirit of God in you? Are you connected to Him? Are you in spiritual relationship with Him? And even if so, are you sufficiently servicing this relationship such that it remains robust and part time the Spirit of the Lord acts like your antenna receiving 24-7 information from the throne of grace. The passage we read this morning goes on to say that what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man inside of him. This emphasizes the position, the place of us, the place for us to have the spirit of God living inside of us. As children of God, we cannot afford to lead our lives like the carnal believers. We cannot afford to lead our lives without the input, without the dictates, without the leading of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God grants us that grace 
to know the things which God had freely given by virtue of coming here on earth of the Lord Jesus Christ, by virtue of the trial and tribulation that he went through, and by virtue of the spirit that he poured onto the church as he ascended at his first coming. It is my prayer that God will grant us even the fuller understanding of the things of God and the fuller understanding of the mysteries of God by virtue of his spirit in us in the mighty name of Jesus. We need the spirit of God to know the things of God. Beloved, in our decision-taking processes, are we still leading our lives like a carnal believer? We have a God who knows the end from the beginning. He knows the middle point from the beginning and he is willing to reveal this to us. The Bible teaches that no good things will he hold back from his beloved. Do we have this sound relationship with him? Do we have this robust relationship with him such that at every junction of need we receive divine assistance? It is my prayer that as we re-examine our lives and we re-examine our walk with him, God will point to us, will reveal to us areas where we need amendments, areas where we need to modify such that we can have the robust life, the robust work that he expects of us even with our God. We sure need the help of the Holy Spirit to help us if we must avoid being controlled by the flesh. It is my prayer that as we go forth into this new day, as we go forth relating with men out there in our places of work, in the community, in what we will say, in what we will do, the Spirit of God will be our guide and lead us aright in the mighty name of Jesus. It is as we do this that our life will manifest the divine wisdom, the divine connection that we have with God. I pray that God will grant us this enablement to live even as his ambassadors here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth this morning. We ask, Lord, that the dew of heaven will rest on these words. Lord, it will cause it to take root in our individual lives. And as it is taking root, Father, it shall bring forth fruits even to the glory of your holy name. At, at the end of our race here on earth, Father, may we not miss even that inheritance that has been promised and prepared for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answers to our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.